What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I have some very, very exciting things to share with you guys today. I turned my bike into a mullet bike, which I am super pumped about. So pumped, too pumped. <laughs> but first I will give you guys a little bit of backstory on how I landed here, why I made these upgrades. And I'm going to show you what all I did to it because I didn't, I did a, little, a few little upgrades while I was at it. I know I'm like the last person in the world to get on this 29er train. Everyone I feel like rides a 29er at this point. They either have a mullet bike or they're riding a 29er. So I've ridden a 29er before a long time ago, but I rented the bike, it wasn't mine. And I also rode a trail for the very first time that I wasn't familiar with. So I feel like the combination of those two things, I was like, eh, whatever, I, I don't need a 29er. It just felt like a really big bike. But a couple of weeks ago, I took Hunter's 29er out and more on that soon, I will do a bike unveiling of what I bought for him because it's, it's a pretty solid bike, I feel like. But I ended up riding it on one of my favorite trails, a trail that I know like the back of my hand. And to me, there were such massive differences that I noticed right off the bat. I didn't have to like read into 29 inch wheels to see the benefits of it. I was cornering really fast. I just felt so stable around corners. And usually I'm not flying into a corner like that. And I felt like I was on the 29er. It was just crazy. And the thing that blew my mind the most was his bike is literally half my bike when it comes to travel. Where I have more of a beefy enduro bike, his is 130 in the front, 120 in the rear, and mine's 160 in the front, 150 in the rear. So quite a big difference. And that was the biggest thing. I was a little bit concerned about taking this bike and going down this trail because I didn't know how it was going to handle. And the wheels truly do somehow make up for the lack of travel that it has. I really couldn't tell that much of a difference, which was absolutely mind boggling to me. But fast forward, I ended up going into my bike shop and just brought it to the guys and was like, hey, could it, would you guys recommend me turning my bike into a mullet bike? And they got really excited. They're like, oh my God, yeah, you would love it. Oh my God, this would be awesome. I had them order me the parts that was needed. The biggest thing for me was I did not want to lose my travel in the front. I did not want to lower the travel in any way, shape or form. So that was my main concern. And they reassured me, no, you're totally good to keep it as is. They ended up trying to get everything as close as possible to the original with how everything was set that way. It didn't feel like I was riding a foreign bike or anything like that. Without further ado, let's look at the bike. So this is her, I really need to get a bike stand. I don't know how I don't have one, but I still don't have one. The crazy thing is I read so many things where people were trying to mess with the links and things like that where it would help it. And I read that you needed to add that to the bike as well. But the guys at the bike shop told me, they're like, Literally, it really, it truly is as simple as changing out the fork and buying a new wheel. Jumping in really quickly because I realized I left out one major, major detail and that is if your bike has a flip chip, then this is what makes this possible and keeps the geometry as close as possible without wrecking that. So you just turn it into the high setting and it doesn't screw up your geometry. So there you go. If you don't have a flip chip, then I'm not sure how this conversion will work out or if it's possible. I'm not sure there. But yeah, just wanted to mention that. And also something else to note, I truly love my bike so much. There's not another bike on the market as of right now that I'd want. I've upgraded this one. I just, I really love this bike so much. And I thought it's probably worth the money of me just investing a little bit more money into this and making it a little more up to date with what everyone's riding right now. So starting off with the wheels, I really wanted to keep everything kind of in the same brand. Um, so I went with another set of WTB wheels. These are the Proterra, same width and everything for the tires and all that. I got the same tire for the up front. This is just a Minion DHF um, for anyone who's wondering. So then my bigger upgrade that I did was I swapped out my fork. I didn't want to go back with the Yari fork. So I went with the RockShox Lyric fork, which I have been eyeing for a minute. So I'm really excited. This is still the same travel as my old one. It's 160 mil. Slightly cool feature if anyone cares about this, but I think it's pretty cool, is the mud guard bolts into the actual fork, which is really nice. So you don't have to mess around with zip ties and all that stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool, but basically, yeah, this is all that they had to do. They had to buy a new tire, new wheel, and new fork. And that's how I was able to upgrade it. That's about it. So just to keep things transparent, because I feel like this is very helpful, especially when I'm watching stuff and wanting to know how much things cost and things like that. If I'm wanting to do an upgrade, you could definitely get this under a thousand dollars. If you don't go with more of a premium fork, if I were to have gone with the Yari again, those are about three, round three, upper threes. Um, whereas 
the Lyric I got for almost $900. So that was the big price jump there. But I will have to make another video letting you guys know how this bike handles, my thoughts on it. Was it worth the upgrade? Was it worth the investment? I will keep you posted, but until then, I'm going to go hit the trail and I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys in the next video, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and let me know what you're riding. Are you still riding a 27.5 or are you completely on the 29er train?